Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing? My name is Apostle Joseph Helen, and I'm coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. This is Trapeza TV, the table of heavenly content. I'm teaching on things that stop you from becoming rich. Things that stop you from becoming rich. Which things are these? God wants you to be rich. The Bible says that we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor for your sake, so that through his poverty you might become rich. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, okay, and we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So riches are a form of grace. When God's grace is upon your life, you surely will be rich. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord, they make rich and they add no sorrow. The Bible also says that God gives us all things richly to enjoy. The Bible also says, bless the Lord, O my soul, in Psalm 103. And all that's within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who renews your youth like that of an eagle? Okay, and who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like that of an eagle? He satisfies your mouth with good things. Your mouth cannot be satisfied if you're not rich. So, let me take you quickly to the things, some of the things that will stop you from becoming rich. Number one. Thinking that having lots of money is a bad thing. If you think that having a lot, lots of money is a bad thing, then it's not possible for you to become rich because you cannot attract what you feel is morally reprehensible. Money is a good thing, and you must see it as a good thing. There are people who think money somewhat has some innate evil in it. They have a sense of embarrassment when dealing with money. They feel uncomfortable when dealing with money. Have you noticed some people, when they're about to pay you, they hide? It's as if they're about to commit a crime. And they're supposed to give you, let's say, just $10. They'll turn this way, look around, and then give it to you. Other people hold it and squeeze it so tight. They think there's something wrong with this money. They think money will attract something evil. It's not possible to be a rich person if you think money is a bad thing. In the book of Ecclesiastes 10, verse 19, the Bible says, Eat good food and drink good wine. If you do that, you will be happy. When you have a lot of money, you can buy anything. You can buy anything that you want. You see, the Bible says when you have a lot of money, you can buy anything. You can buy anything you want. Some version says money answers all things. Okay? So don't think that having lots of it is a bad thing. The Bible says when you have a lot of money, you can buy anything. So the Holy Spirit wants us to have a lot of money. You see, as a man thinketh, so is he. You become the way you think. What is your thought process? Do you think that you don't need a lot of money or you shouldn't have a lot of money? You need to think that you must have lots and lots of money. That should be your mindset. I'm not talking about loving money. I'm talking about having lots of it. Okay? Love people. But have lots of money and use money to take care of the needs of the people around you. So number one, if you think that having lots of money is a bad thing, you cannot be rich. So start thinking that money is a good thing and start thinking that having lots of it is an added advantage. It will make you happier. The Bible says here, it will enable you to eat food, good food, and drink good wine. Okay, it says that if you do that, you will be happy. Okay, so money can actually make you happy. Some people lie and say money cannot make you happy. I don't know what books they read. Yeah, so when you have a lot of money, you can buy anything. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes 10 19. I'm just repeating, you can buy anything that you want. You're not frustrated. You can live wherever you like, go wherever you like. If you have children, you take them to whichever school you like or use whatever system of education you like. If you want to get into business ventures, you can choose to do whatever you like to change humanity. Establishing God's kingdom on earth and in the hearts of men. Number two, if you think that people can only get rich through stealing or through crime, if in your mind, every time you see a rich person, you think, oh, he must have stolen for him to become rich. Oh, he must be dealing in drugs for him to become rich. Oh, he must belong to Illuminati for him to become rich. Oh, he must be in some esoteric organization. He must be a devil worshiper for him to become rich. So you always associate riches with something negative or some criminal activity. If you think that a person has to steal to be rich or a person has to commit a crime to be rich 
or a person has to belong to some esoteric organization or secret organization or some satanic organization to be rich. If that's your thought process, then you will not be rich because you will not attract something that in your mind is only associated with those who do bad things. You notice, for example, in my country, if somebody is rich and prosperous, they'll say, oh, he used to work in government and stole government money. They just won't accept the fact that you could have a very good business acumen and with that you can make lots and lots of money for yourself. They always feel like you must have stolen from some place. For us who are preachers, they always tell us that we've stolen money from church, that we eat tithes and offerings that people contribute. And ladies and gentlemen, somebody just recently told me that. Said, so look at you now, you're going out on a shopping spree, trying to use, not trying to, but using money that you have uh, taken from the church coffers. And I said, oh my goodness, I do online ministry and I never ask anybody to send me money. I get money from my businesses, you see. Such a person cannot be rich because they've already associated riches and a good life with something negative, with theft. So you must change your mind and stop thinking that way, okay? In the book of uh, Proverbs 10 verse 22, the Bible says, Good things from the Lord make you rich and he does not make you sad at the same time. Okay? Good things from the Lord make you rich. So you can be rich because the Lord has given you good things. You don't have to steal to be rich. You don't have to do drugs to be rich. You don't have to be involved in some government thing, you know, some corrupt government practice to be rich. You don't have to eat from public coffers to be rich. You don't have to be a, don't, you don't have to be a corrupt judge or a corrupt lawyer to be rich. You can still be rich because God gives good things to those that love him. Yeah, good things from the Lord make you rich. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord they make rich and they add no sorrows with them. That's another version. King James Version actually says the blessings of the Lord they make rich and they add no sorrow with them. So don't think that that fellow who is rich in your community has stolen some funds from some place. Or if somebody resigns from employment and starts a business and the business flourishes, people always think that that person stole from their employer and quickly resign. Of course, there are people who act like that. But thieves never really sustain entrepreneurship because ultimately they are caught. They have 40 days. After their 40th stealing, they'll be caught. But if you find that somebody's business is sustainable and has been there for years on end, there's something right that they're doing that you should be learning from. Okay? Number three, if you think that the rich people owe you something because you suspect that they stole it from you or they stole it from government, or that they shouldn't buy expensive things, but rather that they should give money to the poor. If you have that notion that why is this person driving such beautiful cars? Why can't he sell that car and give it to the poor? You see, money doesn't operate like that. Money will not operate that way, that you sell what is yours, what you need to do your business, so that you can become poor, so that you can help the poor. The poor cannot help the poor. It takes a rich person to help the poor. It takes a rich person to take the poor to school. It takes a rich person to give the poor food or sources of income. So there is nothing wrong with a person enjoying what they've worked hard for. They shouldn't stop enjoying themselves because somebody is poor. You see, the Bible says he gives us things richly to enjoy. So you enjoy first. The Bible also says that the one who goes to labor should be the first one to eat. The one who goes to war should be the first one to get booty. So you can't go and work all your life and then after that live a miserable life because you've given everything to the poor. If, of course, you've done that for the sake of the gospel, Jesus said in Mark chapter 10, he said, anyone who's left lands, houses, wives, fathers, and all that, for the sake of the gospel, will get the same here on earth. They will be rewarded here on earth. They'll get land right back, money right back, houses right back. and life everlasting in the world to come so they have a blessing on earth and a blessing in heaven as well so your mindset about money must change if you're going to be a rich person it's good to be rich it's good to have lots of money okay and money doesn't come because people steal and don't get angry with the rich thinking they stole from your government or that they stole from some place that you always have this negative opinion about rich people because you can't believe that one can actually work smart and intelligently enough to make money that's clean. That if you see a preacher driving a good car or a preacher living in a good neighborhood 
or a preacher dressed smartly and nicely in some wonderful suit or clothes, you think he must have stolen from the church. You see, take away that mindset. Just renounce it. Get rid of it that people steal to become rich. Thieves never get rich. Because riches can only come to a person who cares for their society. You see, there are those, of course, in the Old Testament that used to be so corrupt, they became rich through corruption, but they never lasted. But lasting riches come to those whose business models and the things they do are beneficial to the society. The things they do are honest and above board. People who are audited and their accounts are found to be above board. People who don't cook books, their accounts are proper. Okay? They don't do insider trading. And they don't do things like that, you know, price fixing, things that are illegal. They work according to the statutes and obligations that they're required to follow. All right? So the rich don't owe you anything. They don't owe you anything. They shouldn't sell anything to give to you. That's already totally contrary to rules of accounting, rules of entrepreneurship. Imagine somebody selling company assets to give to you. That's like selling your country to help the poor. How would that work? It's like a person selling their house to help the poor. Where would they live? Would you give them a place to stay? So there are certain things people have believed because they're spoken over and over again, especially by politicians. One of them is you must, the rich must pay their fair share. Fair share of what? What is fair? Fair means equal. If the rich are paying $20,000, then the poor should pay $20,000 too. That's called fairness. And everybody is paying the same amount. So what is fair share? The rich must pay their fair share. Fair share of what? Because they think the rich stole. Another horrible thing people say is that we're giving back to the society. It means you took it from the society. You stole it from the society. We're not giving back to the society. We are improving our society through entrepreneurship and through teaching people business principles and business models at work that will help them and generations to come. We don't give back to the society because we never took back, we never took anything. We didn't fleece anybody. Okay? The rich don't have to give back. Giving is giving. You don't give back. It's like I borrowed from you, now I'm giving it back to you. It's like you made me rich and I left you poor and in penury, now I need to give back to you, having tortured you for years. You see, such negative notions make people run away from those things that would make them rich. Because people fear being seen as this one who stole from our community, or this one who stole from government, or this one who steals from the church. So you see, instead of somebody dressing well and enjoying themselves and really enjoying the wonderful things God has given him or her, they choose to sneak away and live in slums to pretend that, oh, you know, I'm identifying with the poor and all that. Ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus brought us salvation, he chose to prepare beautiful places for us to stay. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Because he knew very well where you stay is not good enough. He's going to prepare a better place for you. All right? He didn't say, okay, I'm going to live with you forever. No, he said, no, where I am, you, you, so that where I am, you may be there also. I'm preparing a better place for you. Where you are is not good enough, he says. So I don't have to go live in a slum to help slum dwellers. No, I live where I live so that the slum dwellers can aspire to move out of the slum unless they like to stay there. But if you don't like to stay in the slums, you can move out of that slum having been motivated and inspired by somebody willing to teach you the ropes of financial success. Okay? Remember that your money is your right. Okay? And no one else has a right to it unless you cede that right to that person. You see, the reason we pay taxes is because we have allowed the government to tax us. You can choose not to be taxed. How do you do that? You cede tax money to your government by electing legislators. Legislators will go to parliament or wherever legislation is done in your country and they'll make laws. One of them is taxation laws. So the quality of representatives in your legislator, in your legislature, or in your parliament, or in your senate, or wherever laws are made. The quality of lawmakers you elect will determine the kind of taxes you'll pay. So by the time you're paying taxes, 
It will be out of your own free will. You ceded that money willfully by electing somebody who went and created law that would now cause you to pay taxes. So your money is yours unless you willfully and freely cede it to someone else. So your money doesn't belong to everybody, it belongs to you. If you have that mindset, you'll be rich, okay? So if you fear um, being rich because people will say you stole, you're going to be poor and useless on the face of the earth because you will not be able to help grow your, your economy or your community. Yeah. So your money is your right and no one else has a right to it. No one else has a right to your money, not your relatives, nobody. No one has a right to your money unless you cede that right willfully to them. Okay? You get that? So I've already mentioned to you that we cede uh, tax money to government because we elect legislators who determine how much you should pay in taxes. So government has no right to your money unless by your permission. You see that? Number four. The fourth reason why some people cannot get rich, fear of stating your price. You see, you go to do work. Oh, there, there, there are two things here. There's fear of stating your price, number one. Number two is overpricing. There are certain people, let me start with the second one, overpricing. There are certain people who, when they see the rich, immediately their appetites just shoot up. So what they should charge $1,000 for, they will charge $5,000. Oh, you see, that's horrible. It will make you poor because you'll lose out on business. Don't think rich people are so stupid that they don't know the prices of commodities. They manufacture those commodities and they set their prices. So by the time you're charging them for uh, services, they look at you and they think, wow, this greedy one that wants to get rich quick, I'm not giving you work anymore because the last time I gave you work, instead of charging me according to market rate, you quickly inflated your cost until I had to pay five times. You see, I remember some gentleman whom I sent to just buy some accessories. And because he knew I could afford to pay any amount of money, the guy decided to multiply everything by three. Every accessory he brought to me, he said, I needed to pay three times. I knew the price. I'd gone to those shops and I'd found out how much those things cost. By the time I'm sending it to the shop, I already know the price is there. You know, sometimes people ask me, oh, I need help here and there. If by the Holy Spirit I get to see that you really need that help, I'll ask you, what do you need help for? I need to buy X, Y, Z. Then I'll ask you, how much does it cost? Then that's the moment their greed rises and they say, oh, it's about $500. Then when I go to check, I find that the thing is $100. You see, if you think you can fleece or use the rich, you'll never be rich. You cannot attract to yourself something that you abuse, something you don't respect, okay? You lose what you disrespect. You lose what you abuse, okay? Another reason is people fear stating their price. So let's say, for example, I invite you to uh, do some work for me, and by the end of it, instead of telling me, okay, I've worked for you for three hours or four hours, and usually, according to market rates, I charge this number of dollars per hour. Instead, you tell me, oh, pay me whatever you deem fit in your heart. Such a person cannot be rich because they, don't, they feel afraid to state the value of their services, the value of the work they've done. If you cannot know the value of the work you've done, how then can money be attracted to you? Because you're not putting a proper price tag to your services, to your products. That just give me whatever. If you come to babysit or to clean somebody's house, and by the end of it, they ask you, how much do you think I should pay you for this? Well, just pay for whatever is in your mind. Wait, can you do proper costing? Your transport there, the time you spent, the expertise, and what is commonly charged for such services. You can charge slightly more or slightly less. I usually recommend that you charge slightly less, slightly below the market rate so that you become competitive. You see, so don't fear stating your price. If you've worked somewhere and you expect to be paid, before you leave, ask, when should I expect my payment? What date should I expect my payment? Some people think that's rude. No, it's not. Other people think that if you talk that way, you might come forth as a greedy person or a rude person. No. It's your right to state your price and to ask 
to be paid. In some cases, it's even fine and biblically right for you to sue somebody if they're frustrating you after you've done well and you know that you did a good job. You can take them to court so that they're compelled to pay you with interest. Don't fear stating your price. I don't fear asking for what is yours. Walk right to the person who owes you money and say, look, when am I getting my money back? Pay me. And if they forget, send them, send them a reminder. Pay me. I did my work. So don't fear stating your price. In Proverbs 20 verse 14, the Bible says, during negotiations when people are in the marketplace and they're negotiating for product, this is a buyer now who's going to a vendor. The buyer says, this is a, a buyer, this is called a man. A man may buy something at a good price, but he says that the price is too much. He says, oh, the price is too much. He's bargaining. You know, listen, bargaining is a good thing, but don't bargain too much. Bargain up to the level of market rates, okay? He goes away after buying the thing at a bargain, at a good price. Then he likes to say that he was really clever. He was clever because he bought something so cheap. Yeah? You see, there are people who pay exorbitantly for things. That will make you poor. You need to learn to bargain so that you get the best bargain. But don't bargain so much until clients and vendors don't want to see you. Everything needs to be in, mo in moderation. Yeah? So learn to state your price, but at the same time, don't overpay for services. Find out before you engage somebody what people usually pay for. For example, if you bring in a plumber to your house or an electrician to help you fix electric problems, find out what's normally paid per hour or for that particular job. And then if they ask for slightly more, slightly less, you'll be able to tell whether they're trying to use you or not, to steal from you or not. If they charge too little, tell them, well, you are charging too little. Usually, this kind of work attracts this amount of money. Yeah, so you're not going to lose out by being honest. If somebody's charging you too little, tell them and pay them market rates. You need tremendous honesty when it comes to money. Not being a giver will make you poor. See, money answers all things. And the major reason it comes to you is because you can help yourself and others. So if you're not a giver, money will ultimately leave your hands, even if you have millions. You see, Proverbs 11 to 25 says, a generous person will prosper, and anyone who gives water will receive a flood in return. I hear that. A generous person will prosper, and anyone who gives water will receive a flood in return. So if you give a little amount to somebody or something small to somebody, of course, give out of wisdom. You need to learn how to give. Giving is not just something you use, you just don't dish things out. Yeah, There's some giving that you'll do to your detriment and also to the detriment of the receiver. But if you do it the biblical way, if you give the right way, the Bible says if you give a little water, you'll get a flood in return. So be generous. Now, Another reason some people are not rich is because they have a critical tongue. Now, most criticism is based on tearing people down rather than building them up. There is no way you can be rich if your work is to tear things down. Rich people build things up. Rich people build people up. Okay? That's why they start institutions of learning, to build people up. So money shies away from those who destroy. So most social critics tend to be broke. And those who aren't broke operate way below their financial capacities. These social critics, you see, whether on social media or whatever. If they're not broke, you'll find they're struggling. They're below their financial capacity. They could be much richer, much wealthier. So the rule of the thumb is that money gravitates towards those who help build people and those who help build things. In Ephesians 4 verse 29, the Bible says, You must let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but only that which is beneficial for the building of the one in need, that it may give grace to those who hear. That words that pull down should not come out of your mouth. Don't be the person who says negative things about people. Always praise. Speak the, the positive word. Okay? So if you have a critical tongue, money will run away from you. Next one. If you're jealous and envious. Don't envy the rich. Learn from them instead. It's due to envy that the Pharisees got Jesus killed. You know that. Jealous and envious people kill competition. Not knowing that competition is what births innovation. You need competitors for you to innovate and re-innovate. So you can't grow 
and advance without innovation. And innovation comes when there is competition. When you improve your services and brand them much better, make them more accessible and more useful, more efficient, that comes because there's a competitor selling the same thing. So you want your business model and your value proposition to be more attractive than your competitor. Okay, in Matthew 15, verse 10, the Bible says, because he knew that the high priest had handed him over due to jealousy. Jesus knew that the high priest had handed him over to Pilate because they were jealous of him. Jealousy and envy will make you poor because you'll end up killing your very destiny helper. You'll find yourself running away from the one God anointed to help you because you turned around and became envious and jealous of them. In the book of Mark 15, verse 13, the Bible says, Cru they started saying, crucify him. They shouted back, crucify him. Yeah? Because of what? Jealousy. See, Pilate asked them, what do I do with Jesus of Nazareth? They say, crucify him. But Pilate says, I've not found anything wrong he's done. They wanted him dead because he, they were jealous of his success. Don't be jealous of a successful person. Learn from them instead. Yeah? Number eight reason why some people are not prosperous is when they think they know everything and can advise everyone. I see a lot of that on social media. On social media, even people who don't know anything about medicine advise medical practitioners. I've found people trying to advise lawyers. I've found people who know nothing or very little about the Bible trying to advise me. In my area of calling and expertise, some want to advise me in my area of trade, music, land, real estate. Listen, you can only advise me if you're greater than me. If you're more knowledgeable than me, then you can give me advice. Yeah, if you just want to talk for the sake of it, the first question I'll ask is this. Now that you're so knowledgeable, why aren't you great? Why can't you put your knowledge in practice and show us by example, practically, that the things you say can turn into revenue? If not, I will not take your advice. So if you think you know everything and you think you can advise everyone, you will be poor. Rich people humble themselves to learn from those who are greater than them. They'll ask questions. They'll do apprenticeship. They become understudies. They visit people. They work for them for free just so that they can learn one or two things. So don't think you can advise everybody and don't think you know everything. So you find we put posts on Facebook or other social media platforms and some poor fellow who doesn't want to be helped out of poverty, thinks they can critique when they have nothing to show for their intelligence, wisdom, or knowledge or skills. Let your work speak for itself. All right? In Proverbs 15 verse 22, the Bible says, Where there is no counsel, plans fail. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Counselors will establish Plans. So if you have a business plan and you have good counselors, it will be established. But if you just find people around who think they can just say whatever, you're not a counselor, are you? Are you a counselor in religious matters? Are you a counselor in spiritual matters? Can you correct apostles? Do you know anything about apostle and the apostolic ministry? Do you know anything about prophets and prophetic ministry? Do you know anything about governance and politics? Before you start criticizing and talking ill of your politicians, what do you know about politics? What have you done politically that people can look at and say, yes, your word contains weight? Yeah? The last one. These are just nine points of race. There are very many others, but these are nine main points. Reaching conclusions before understanding a matter perfectly and speaking before you think, that will make you poor. If you reach conclusions before you understand a matter perfectly, and if you speak before you think, you'll become poor. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11, the Bible says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up my childish ways. Did you notice that kiddish people talk first, then they think after that, and then they reason afterwards? Instead of reasoning, as they think, and then speaking, they do the opposite. They talk first, and then they think about what they spoke. If you're like that, you reach conclusions before you think. You cannot be rich. So Think, then reach conclusions, all right? Avoid gossip. Gossip dries up money. How is gossip avoided? If somebody's talking about me in your presence, stop them, call me, and tell them now talk. If I'm not available, call me, put me on loudspeaker, tell them, okay, now talk. 
if you relish hearing secret things said about people, you are also a gossip. Because you become an audience. You are a fan to those who gossip. You become a source of pleasure to gossip because they know they have a listening ear, a ready listening ear. I never tolerate gossip, never, or lies. If one starts to talk about somebody and I can feel that they're disparaging the person, they're speaking negatively about them, I'll call that person and say, hey, excuse me, Mr. Sam, there's this gentleman here called John, he's talking about you. And I wanted you to be part of this conversation because I don't tolerate gossip. All right, Mr. John, can you carry on? Mr. Sam is on loudspeaker. You'll find <clears throat> they start clearing their throats and changing the topic because they wanted to tear you down. They were already envious, jealous, and vicious, and all the negative, slanderous things you can never talk about. How do you quell gossip? Bring the person being talked about and let them sit at the table. Now, this does not mean that you cannot come to me as a mature counselor to seek help. If you're seeking help, you can talk about the person who's hurt you, the person you have issues with. That's not gossip. That's a person who's gone for redress, recourse. But gossip is me just coming, not because you're a counselor, but I'm coming to tell you how bad so-and-so is so that you can, be, you can feel bad about them or so you can avoid them or so you can abandon them or so you can hate them. That's a gossip. So avoid that because it dries up money. It makes people poor. If you're watching me and you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that it doesn't profit a man to gain the whole world and lose their souls. I want you to know Jesus, Lord and Savior. I want you to get saved so that you have eternal life. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and rose again for my justification. Today, I receive you as Lord and Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I'm now saved. If you pray that prayer, you're now a child of God. Get into the discipline of studying the word of God. Prayer, study, prayer, fellowship. Watch videos, read books so that you grow your faith. It's up to you to grow your faith. God will not grow your faith for you. When the disciples asked Jesus to increase their faith, he told them, look at the master's seed. Be like a seed. The seed grows and multiplies. So you go grow your faith yourself by studying because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for prophetic ministry. Okay, I'll be teaching on prophecy. My gift is to teach the body of Christ. Mine is to remove wax from your ears so that you, you can hear the word of God clearly. So tomorrow I'll be teaching on wisdom for prophecy, dream interpretation, how to hear God's word, codes, especially to be specific, how to prophesy as you watch animals and birds. As the Bible says that if you look at what is natural, if you observe nature, you will know the invisible attributes of God, even his voice. You can learn how God talks when you watch nature because his fingerprints are all over the things that he created. Thank you for tuning in. I'll be reading your comments later. And every time I read and like it, I'll be praying for you. I'll be releasing blessings upon you, okay? I love you so much. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye.